try to get them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, appreciate it on your Instagram story. Right? Uh, Sometimes they just write post. themselves. I, I love that. I screenshotted that. I made it into a post. Like, not even just a story. It's a full-on post because I loved it. There was a uh, legit question on Reddit that said, what is the one thing you do on Friday to start your weekend properly? And, of course, I put the Bill Squire Friday get down because it's the way to go. That's how we do it around these parts. Your Cleveland Guardians are back here at home tonight to play the Minnesota Twins, who so far are a very good ball club. You got to call it a ball club. Sounds like you know what you're talking about. Uh, they're above 500. Your Guardians currently are not, but it's still the beginning of the season. Mm. A lot of baseball yet to be played in the 2023 season. And so 7 10 tonight is your first pitch right around the corner at uh, Carnegie and, um, boy, they say it all the time, right at the corner of Carnegie and. Uh... It is on the tip of my tongue. You are correct. It is on the tip of my tongue. Carnegie and on on the tip of my tongue. On on I am on a tear here, but I cannot. Carnegie and Ontario. There you go. Twins Guardians tonight. Thirteen years. Seven ten. What's that? Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, I'm in a good mood today. I, I don't Ooh, often good. say that, but I'm feeling all right. I have a br- I bought a brand new pack of brand new sharpies. Oh, that's I bought a, a good whole feeling. pack of brand new black sharpies, so they have brand new tips on them. You know, once you're mm-hmm. using your sharpies for a while, they get all mushy, and then you don't have a fine point on them. And you know how I like a fine point. I have a fine point. There's nothing that drives me crazier than when I'm selling after a show and the sharpie, like I'm signing posters. It starts to dry out and doesn't, you know, I don't have the best handwriting, but I, I do like to, you know, make the posters look nice. Right. I try to I try to do a good signature. I try to write people's names legibly. I mean, when they're, they need to be. But a, you, need, you need a good Sharpie to do that. They need to be a little lived in. When you get them brand new, they have that super fine point, which is mm-hmm. okay. But when they're a little lived in, it's when they're like Barney Rubble's face. Towards the end, there's a nice contemporary reference for you kids uh, that um, you, that you can't tell what the hell you're writing anymore. And then I got a call from a friend of mine last night that I have not talked to in a long, long time. This buddy of mine who was on the air uh, at the radio station I worked for in Pittsburgh. And um, he has since gotten out of the radio business. But he texts me out of the blue and he goes, hey, I hope this is still Alan. Uh, I heard some of the show today. Sounded awesome. And I was like, dude, I'm like, are you in town? He goes, no, I'm in Pittsburgh, but I listened on the app and blah, blah, blah. So uh, he's like, can I call? I go, yeah. So he called. Turns out that he's making a trip to Chicago or something. He's visiting ballparks. This is like his thing. He's single dude. He's visiting ballparks. And he wanted to- That's becoming like a thing that a lot of people are doing where they're trying to hit every ballpark uh, in the, you know- uh, every major league ballpark. It is a thing. Like my, remember my years ago, my it. buddy Mike Jones came in. He was in town. My friend Mike Jones, mm-hmm. who does the midday Ooh. show, he's at DC one hundred and one in in DC, mm-hmm. and he does the midday show there. And he years ago was like, "Hey man, I'm going to be in town. Can I come?" He came in and yeah, hung out fun. on the show for a little bit because he and his wife were visiting ballparks and they were coming to Progressive Field. So I'm talking to my buddy last night and I hadn't talked to him in so long, and it was just cool to like kind of catch up. And jump right back into it. And he said, uh, he told me where he was. He basically wanted to know, based on where he was staying, how sketchy was the area. And I'm like, are you at a hotel or an Airbnb? And he goes, I'm, I'm at an Airbnb at this part of town. And I was like, well, you're fine there. I'm like, just Uber. I'm like, you're only going to be going north. You know, he's visiting Wrigley Field. And I said, when was the last time you were at Wrigley Field? And he said, I've never been to Wrigley Field. I said, well, it is an amusement park now for people who've been to Wrigley Field in maybe the last four or five years. They basically tore down everything around Wrigley Field that gave it a little bit of local flavor. Uh, and it does look like an amusement park now. They put up like high-rise condos. And it's pretty sad when you consider the McDonald's local flavor, but it had been there for 100 years tore all that down, and they built, like, an outdoor 
thing, I mean, those of you who've been to Wrigley Field recently, you know what I'm talking about. It looks very, very different than it did even five or six years ago. So we had a nice chat, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, kind of give them the lay of the land. And uh, But uh, I, I haven't talked to anybody uh, that I go that far back with in a long time. So it's nice, nice surprise. I'm like putting my daughter to bed and the phone rings. And uh, I said, uh, tell your mom you got to go to bed because <laughs> I'm on the phone now. And uh, But it was uh, it was nice. It was nice to catch up. He said, the show sounds awesome. He said, I don't know how long the he people. He's a good friend. He said, I don't know how long the people on your show have been with you. He goes, but you guys all sound like you've been together for a long, long time. And I said, well, a couple of us have been. Um, I said, but that's uh, that's good to hear. I mean, it was nice to catch up with him. You and I over 10 years. Pound cake, what are you, six or seven? Uh, I think it'll be eight in September. Eight, eight in September. Damn. My, my, Dude. My, yeah, my uh, first day. I remember the day I got hired, like, permanently was September 1st, 2015. Wow. I can't. I honestly can't believe it's been that long. Did I do the math right? Is that math? <laughs> That's that, eight years. Is I that mean, correct. It's twenty twenty three now. <laughs> yeah. Twenty three minus fifteen is eight, as I recall. Well, just time just goes by so fast because twenty fifteen doesn't seem like that long ago. It really doesn't. No, it. it Whenever I think of like last year, it's twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Like that's what I always think of, and I'm like, oh wait, that was. So long ago. Like a year is not yeah. a year is or not like a fair. year when I go like oh, oh a couple years ago, but I'll be talking about something that happened in twenty fifteen right. or twenty sixteen. But well, like, well, it was this weird between Trump and COVID, there was this weird combination of that chunk of time feeling like it was together. Well, feeling like it was super fast, but also it was a hundred years long. Right. Like tw- I, I, I didn't put two and two together, but I was like twenty sixteen. Well, that's four. <laughs> <laughs> correct. That yeah. is that is correct math. I'm killing think, it with this math here all but, of a sudden. But a lot of 2016 was a big year. It was the year I graduated college. It was the year that we went to Jamaica. Uh, it was the year of the championship, and I got my first apartment in Cleveland. So that year, 2016, was just like a. I was like, I can't believe your boy won the presidential election. Uh, Trump, yeah, I was yeah. Gonna see again, st- big stuff happened. I don't even remember. See, so it was, yeah, it was crazy, wild times. But I've come so far since then. You really have. Yeah, but at the end. Doesn't even well, who's matter. Doing the raping? Why? Because of Lincoln Park. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he doesn't listen to the station. He doesn't know what's going on I around know, here. I know that one. Uh, doesn't even matter. Yeah, he's comes tried so hard and come so far. In eight years, I still don't know my rock knowledge. <laughs> it's, it's we've, all right. we've tried calendars. Fortunately, <laughs> it's not part of the uh, requirement for the gig. We've tried name that song. Yeah. Nothing. Well, that's always fun. We could play Is That Skinnerd. I mean, um, I don't have it prepared, but, I mean, we could uh, certainly do that if you want. You want me to play a couple of songs, Bill, and then ask yeah, them if I always they're love, Skinnerd? I always love Right, to dip them back in. I mean, as more time goes on, as more uh, time transpires in between playing this, I think that maybe he'll acquire some more knowledge by osmosis, like just maybe having it on I mean, the background. I mean, he's picked up a few yeah, but his knowledge is so weird so and arcane, though. but sometimes yeah. he just gets a bullseye. Yeah. Let me give away this money very quickly, and then we'll uh, throw into that. It's $1,000 here. Last few keywords you're going to get on the show today before the Guardians game tonight. So listen closely to each one of these. We're down to the wire. It's a chance for you to grab a grand. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the buzzard bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Girl. You've heard this song, Pound Cake? No. No? Listen to it, and when it kicks in, see if... um... It hasn't kicked in. No. See, you know the song. Is that Skinnerd? No. Good job. Correct. That is ZZ Top. 
I just know this song because you used to play Girls Go Crazy for a Sharp Dressed Man. Yeah, when Mattitude was oh, the intro right. on the yeah. show. Every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man. Because <laughs> he get the dressed up for his club gigs. Yeah. Mattitude, who, I saw him <laughs> He's pimping some tequila. tequila. I was like, oh, look at him. For Cinco de Mayo. Big britches. Wow, there. talk about cultural appropriation. Mm-hmm. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, we're Please having, monitize it. My girlfriend and I are having a lasagna tonight because we don't appropriate no cultures. <laughs> You're not having a Mexican lasagna? No, just regular old lasagna. Mmm, noodles. <laughs> Yesterday, my girlfriend, I called her as I was leaving uh, work, and it takes me about five or six minutes to get home. So she had this brilliant idea to hide in the closet, and she's going to try and scare me when I got home. And so I get there, I you know put my keys on the rack, and then I'm going to put my backpack on the table that I usually put it on, but she thought I went the other way, and she was waiting for me to come back, and then she ah! had no idea where she, where I was in the apartment, and she just kind of had to, like, come out of the closet and be like, <laughs> <laughs> I just watched her, like, so slowly stupid. walk out of the closet. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I was trying to scare oh my you. God. That's, now, that is funny. It was so funny. Um, <laughs> I was in the back of the closet looking for shoes. <laughs> it's a moment where you got to think about, like, all right, how long am I going to keep this up? How long am I going to wait to, to, for him to get over here? Because the yeah. longer you wait, the more ridiculous it's going to be. Like, yeah. I was in there for 45 minutes <laughs> trying to hear your footsteps. You, you're quiet. Quiet as a mouse. Because you will have already made a couple of laps, and you'll go, yeah. honey, and then she's got to make the <sighs> choice to reveal herself or not. Yeah, and then she was doing laundry the other day, and this is just so funny to me where, you know, we, we would do, like, the shared machines downstairs, and there was someone in there that she was using one of the dryers, and she's like, do you mind if I use one of these bigger dryers? And the lady was kind of, like, huffing and puffing. She's like, well, somebody's left their clothes in here. Like, for hours. It's been hours. And she's like, you know what? I'm just going to take these clothes out of here and put them over on the table. As soon as you do, that's when they show up. Right. And my girlfriend's like, oh, okay. Uh, And then she, you know, puts uh, (laughs) our clothes into the dryer. And then a few hours later, when she, or like an hour later, when she went back down, she realized that that lady took other clothes that my girlfriend had left in the dryer, and I think this lady was being real weird about it because she knew that those were her, uh, like, our clothes. Was she being passive-aggressive, or what I she think doing? so. She was kind of, like, huffing and puffing and being weird about it, so my girlfriend was so embarrassed because she's like, I think she knew that those were my clothes, but I forgot about them. Right. And it was just, it's very funny. That's to why just you have, have to- someone, like, taking your clothes out of the dryer for you, because you're and you're just like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you live in a building with a communal laundry room, oh, like you have to it. set an alarm because otherwise mm-hmm. you will forget because you'll get doing other things. Oh, yeah. And then somebody, it gets really passive aggressive between people that you never see. So you'll come downstairs and you won't see who took your wet clothes out and threw them on top of the dryer or something. But somebody else will have clothes in the dryer. So then you have to make the decision, well, do I pull theirs out and throw them on top? You'll never see each other. Right. See, I'm really good about I When I was throwing hands on Prospect Avenue, that was a communal washer and dryer, like laundry room. And I wouldn't wash that often, but I would do huge loads when I did. Yeah! And so, 235. So, <laughs> and so, like, I because I would hate doing laundry because I it, it would cost money. It was expensive. And then you, you got to set an alarm because I didn't want it, my stuff to get, like, thrown out or, you know, like, thrown away or whatever. So I would go down there. Oh, that's a big load. And my, my, I could always tell which washer or dryer was mine if I forgot because it would always be rattling because my loads were so big. And 235, it's an yeah. embarrassment mm-hmm. of riches right, right. And then when I got load. a big load, I go put it in there to the point where the landlord was like, hey, you. I'm like, yeah. He's like, are you going to do laundry? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, you, you, one load at a time. You can't just wash like oh, that's a big three load. loads worth in one. I'm like, Ugh. I hate it. I just remember when I f- first moved back to Chicago, 06, and my girlfriend and I were renting an apartment. And I didn't have much time to find a place. She hadn't moved yet. We, she was, we were both moving from Pittsburgh, and she hadn't moved yet. So I had to come find a place, sign the lease, whatever. The place we lived in it had a communal washer and dryer, 
But for this entire building, there were two washers oh, and God, two dryers. No way. And it was like three twenty-five a load, and it was still quarters. And I was like, I it's like if home. you if you ever do like if you ever travel overseas and you do laundry, they had these. They crow about these combination washer dryers that. If you really thought about it, you'd go, well, they haven't discovered some magic. They're just going to suck. They don't work. And, of course, they don't. You put it in, and then it's supposed to dry when it's done. But you take your clothes out, and they're, like, mostly damp. Mm -hmm. And it's just awful, and they stink. And you're like, why am I doing this? There's a newer one that is, I think it's, like, an Indiegogo or something like that that they're developing, that it's a combination one where you can just put it in like a, any apartment you don't even have to have a water line there's like a reservoir in there and i'm really interested in maybe getting one of those at some point because we're not actually supposed to have Ooh. laundry in our but i think something like that is a loophole can, yeah i think that's a loophole but they're also small so it's like you could do some clothes in there but you can't do like bed sheets God, and I stuff <laughs> after, <laughs> yeah it's like it's like a countertop coffee maker yeah. but for laundry after having a washer like bread maker after having a washer and dryer in my apartment, I really don't want to go back to a communal washer and dryer. I mean, it does I'll, suck, but I'll go back to my mom's it's house worth, if that's the case. It's worth it for the views. But then we also have like we have a pretty good setup where we got a wagon that we use for our laundry and stuff like that. Like a little, we have, little red rider. It's it's just like a little collapsical. It's collapsical. That is a pound cake. A collapsical. <laughs> a collapsical. A collapsible uh wagon that actually works really well. Comes in quite handy. But I digress. Back to Is This Skinnerd? Oh, yeah. With Cody Poundcake Brown. <laughs> Is this Leonard Skinnerd? Yes. Is this called, game not fun anymore? It's called Gimme Three <laughs> Steps. Yeah. He's nailing it. He is. That was pure luck. I two no for idea. two. Now, he won't know. Well, I don't want to say anything. This is not Skinner. This doesn't now, sound like Skinner. What makes you think this is not Leonard Skinner? I don't know. A lot of uh, different instruments. That I'm not He's three for three. That's Alice Cooper. I'm okay. 18 is the song there. What cop- What instrument is that? A, a guitar? No, I think he used yeah, the Oh, the harmonica. The harmonica. Like was, okay. <laughs> Probably Blues Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> Aerosmith, he's four for four. Wow, look at this guy. All right, if he goes, that doesn't mean I know the instruments, though. But that's what I mean. I the mean, best we can hope main... for is that something is sinking in. Yeah. And maybe something is sinking in. We're just getting lucky. We're getting lucky. Of course, there's a long ramp on this song. Does this sound like Leonard Skinner? So far, yes. So you think this is Skinner? I said so by, by what I'm sounding so far, yeah. What I'm hearing. Oh. Sorry, that was you too. Gonna go. No, can't win them all. No, you cannot. Mm, let me see here. Let me find. Hold on. Ooh. I'll play something that he's heard. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard this. I mean, every one of our goddamn stations plays it. We play it. The lake plays it. I think Magic plays it. This song's 40 years old. This is Phil Collins. This is not Skinner. It's not Skinner. I don't know how to, I mean, but it's not Phil Collins either. I guess you're right. It's not Skinner. That's the only game. Not Phil Collins. That is White Snake. Oh. Yeah. White Snake? Ain't that, that's Brett Michaels? No. Who? David Coverdale, he's been on this show. Poison was. Poison oh. was Brett Michaels. Damn, I know. They were a hair band, though, right? I'm getting somewhere. This is Skinner. This is Skinner, he says. This is actually one of your favorite artists, Robert Zombie Esquire. You, ah. Mr. Rob Zombie, <laughs> that he loves so much. Yeah. Next time you meet him on the red carpet, just go, hey, I thought you were Leonard Skinner. I, I mean, separate the art from the artist. I love the Rob Zombie person. I not don't know the White he, Zombie band. I know Dracula or Dracula. <laughs> I know that song. And I know Dracula. Uh, the Devil's Rejects. I know his yeah. movies. You I- like his films, not his music. Mm-hmm. 
I understand. Yeah, because I was a, uh, what, a 13, 14 year old dude watching boobs. <laughs> like, all his movies have, like, sex scenes. He in loves them, boobs. And they're, like, fake boobs. That's why he casts his wife and everything. He she loves to some, show them. She got some boobies. Yeah, she has some jugs. Let me break here. If you want to get a text in for something, 35192, alancoxshow.com. If you want to watch live, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 W.